It's the second match of the day here. It's going to be X Hope for LP taking on Yuan Su for World Elite. And they are currently winless. So looking to get their first match on the scoreboard. Uh, LP have brought the Zoo Warlock, which is banned out. That is a face hunter in the lineup. Uh, the Tempo Demon Hunter, so topping out at Skull. And the Pain Warrior. World Elite bringing the Warrior, which is banned. They have the Priest, which this is last hero standing, that will be looking to take on the opposing Warrior. And their own Demon Hunter. And their Secret Rogue, which Yuan Su is queuing up first. Hope taking a long time over this mulligan, and I don't blame anyone. You should always take a long time over demon hunter mulligans, they are complicated things. But this looks like a sensible one to me, it looks like a fairly straightforward one. So that sigil, that'll be interesting to see how he chooses to use that. Whereas on Yuan Su's side, obviously, having a dirty tricks and a blackjack stunner could enable him to do. A lot of damage early on in the right situations. So Exo picks up another Sigil Runner. This is a pre nerf 2 1 Sigil Runner, just to be absolutely clear on this. So he'll definitely be throwing that out there and then be interesting to see what he does after that. Presumably will take the Battle Fiend, but could also just play the other Sigil Runner. Obviously, won't get the card that way. With all the left hand side of his hand being cheap spells. I imagine he'll wait until it hits the left-hand side of his hand before playing it to get that juicy, juicy extra card that can be so useful against Rogue. A nice early board already. Looks like a straightforward dagger up for Yuan Su, but does he want to use the backstab as well? Or should I be phased? He wants to use the backstab as well, but he needs to plan when he's going to use his stunner. And he can use that twice in one turn with the shadow step available to him too. So we may see the backstab held off on. Always nice to have the option to make big Edwins, even though there's not an Edwin in the hand. So delaying things can often be really helpful. But he is going to backstab it use the stunner for something that costs more if you can put something out of the game until turn five or six like a three mana minion and just bounce it back for instance shadow weaver there then yes that is a much better deal so Nothing doing there on turn two for Demon Hunter. It's always an amazing feeling. And then you suddenly realise, well, hang on. This is great. But if he's not doing anything on turn two, the big stuff is still to come. You need to be prepared for that. Yeah, you're so uncomfortable with this decision he has to make now. Because you play the dirty tricks and it gets triggered. Then your Blackjack Stunner is useless for a long time there. The rogue doesn't pack full of secrets. So you have to use them judiciously. But if you don't play it now, you're doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, and he doesn't want to be doing nothing. I mean, the redaggering has some merit, of course, but not much. Guess the good news here. Oh, X Hope. So use the Battle Fiend to check for the ambush. But now it's not been ambushed, he doesn't have much of a turn. Whereas if he'd gone for the Twin Strike first, which he's probably going to end up having to use anyway, because he wants to develop the Sigil Runner, then he would have got the news it was Dirty Tricks and been able to develop those Shadow Weavers, I feel. Personally, I just don't like the way this turn worked out at all, and I don't think X Hope does either. It's not a disaster. He's still developed a decent amount of attack onto the board. And 
you know, keeping the Shadow Weavers for later can sometimes just be good. In the meantime, though, the cards that Yuansu picked up there, Double Ambush and Hana, is just going to give him the option to go off in secret terms. He can play the one ambush to activate his Blackjack Stunner. He can trade into the City Runner with his face. He can stun back the Battle Fiend. He can Shadow Set the Stunner, and then next turn. Assuming the ambush is activated, he can go Hanar and ambush and start doing the things that Hanar does. The one five Hanar and cycle through a whole load of secrets. But he's just playing the sensible way. Feels that he has enough time not to worry. Plus, the, the Hanar secret thing can be just a bit rubbish. It feels great to get all that card advantage, but then your opponent plays one minion and half of your secrets go off and don't really do much apart from maybe copies or something. And you suddenly realise that their 1 1 has dealt with half of your nonsense. So this is similar to the play I was going to make, except he didn't waste the stunner, which means it's better than the play I was going to make. Also advanced his Galakond, which can be a big deal. Getting down a level 2 or level 3 Galakond is fairly unlikely because the game might not go that long but if it does you can turn the tempo back in your favor pretty rapidly he's not taking a huge amount of damage yet this is good the instincts for this this matchup are that you feel as the rogue that you're massively overpowered by demon hunter you have no healing, they hit you a lot, they hit you fast, they hit you hard, and it hurts. But actually, Demon Hunter's reach is a little bit more limited than your instincts make you realise. Like, the hero power only does one at a time. There's obviously the Metamorphosis, which is 10 damage, which is obviously a monstrous deal. And some of the weapons. And also the Adept, the Gladebound Adepts. So there's quite a bit, but it's it's not as much as your your gut tells you it is. They're, they're perfectly entitled to only draw one or two of those cards. It's not like you've got the Hunter Hero Power chomping away at your health total every turn. They have to actually spend mana on doing most of these things, and a lot of it in some cases. And so if the road being on 21 and moving into turn 6 with nothing on board isn't quite the disaster you might think it would be. Again, maybe against Hunter you'd be feeling a little bit scared here. Oh, don't get me wrong, you're not very happy here, but you're, you're safe. You're still in this game of Hearthstone. The game is definitely on. Freezing Trap. I never realised that the picture on Freezing Trap is a Freezing Trap. I guess that's something I should have noticed in the last five or six years at some point. But yeah, this feels mighty powerful. Let's see how X-Hope navigates four secrets. He's already had a bit of an issue navigating one, in my opinion, so... I guess we'll find out. We're also going to find out how I get along navigating four secrets. Because that's going to be fun. Okay, so it's Freezing Trap, Noble Sacrifice... Oof. Counterspell. Oh, an ambush. Okay. It isn't a great deal of fun navigating all these. Well, actually, if there's nothing on the line, it is quite good fun. But when a mistake might cost your team a match in a huge team championship, then it's not quite so much fun. So, taking the, the slow road with the skull. <laughs> so many options and nothing happening. So, mana burning the opponent, I think that was mana burn at least. Uh, let's hope sort of looking like that was a disaster, but I think that was good. 
mopped up another secret. And yeah, it was a mana burn, which has stopped Lackey into Togwaggle, which I think would have put Yuan Su in front, despite the health discrepancy. I think he has enough going on there that that would have been a big deal. Interesting this. I think I would personally take Vaporize here. Um, like, if you take the other one, which is Eye for an Eye, what two mana spell are you hoping to get here that's better than Vaporize? There's a pressure plate there. And I think sometimes taking the bad Paladin secrets just to get a reroll can be a trap. Uh, mage secrets are expensive, but I don't think mage secrets are worth three mana, but they're they're just better cards than a lot of the two mana secrets. But a full house of stuff to navigate once again. And X Hope needs to get on with this. I mean, you want to is quite clearly now set up and ready to make a board. So X Hope needs to do it himself this turn preemptively, or he's going to be. He can assume at least he's going to be facing down a nightmare. We can see it's going to be a bit togwaggle dependent. And maybe it isn't a total disaster for another turn after that. But the secrets do offer some protection. Not just because they're going to do decent things, but also because you have to play things in a roughly sensible order. So as not to get blown out by cards that aren't even on the board. Secrets are good in that regard. The has got his plan. I'm not sure what his plan is, but he's developed it over the last 60 seconds. And now he's just going to spend 15 seconds showing us what he's got in mind. Getting another skull while he can. Oh, this is... This seems like bad rope management to me, but we will see. We are seeing it from Yuan Su's side, so sometimes it can be a little bit behind. And you don't see what would have happened. But yeah, it looks like X hopes. Oh, he's managed to get some stuff off. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea if he played that well or not. There's a lot of stuff going on there. And my main concern was how he felt about playing the skull of Gul'dan. But we shall see. Sort of all hinges on whether he got it correct, what Yansu can do this turn. Because obviously playing that second skull now has made X-Hope's future turns all very promising indeed. And he has chipped Yansu down to 13. And these secrets, whilst they're great and all that, they haven't really advanced Yansu's situation. But you know what does advance his situation? An 8-8 Edwin Van Cleef. For those who remember X Hope when he used to play on the Western scene, he played in a couple of championships. He won the Southeast Asia Thailand Major. You may recognise the pose that he's currently sat in, except he tended to have a hat in his hand that he would sort of chew on during the games. The hat is long gone, but the same terrified looking pose and hard thinking pose, I guess, still exists. Well, he can keep the Edwin frozen for two turns, if that's one of his choices of winning. But then he's got to make sure he delivers lethal damage pretty rapidly after that. And really, at some point, you'd want him to take care of this Hana because it's... It's not menacing, but it's interrupting the, the time it's taking X-Hope to win the game. So I'd like to see him just, yeah, do this. Twin slice and just kill it off. Get this nonsense off the board. Freeze up the Edwin and actually get on with killing your opponent. Ice Barrier. Always really annoying for Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter decks are 
kind of designed to do 30 damage. At which point they run out of stuff. I'm also not sure why there's an ambush token still just chilling on the board. Right, we've been talking about how X Hope's hand has been building up to have a couple of good turns, but so has Yuan Su's hand. Looks like he's going to go for the Togwaggle stuff all in one go, and if he's going to do that, he needs to make the space right now, he needs to set up the board right now. He needs to make a lot of just space, play all your cards, and get on with Togwaggling next turn. Titanic Lackey's a really good one to pick up here. Just putting a ginormous Edwin as a taunt in the way. Oh, and Armour's, yeah, X-Hope as well. That is some generation there. It's one of the worst two drops that X-Hope could have hoped to see there. He's already going to have to get through this Edwin. He's going to wince again when he sees this Titanic lackey. Yeah, he's going to get through so much damage. And next turn he's getting togwaggled. And this game has turned on its head. And Hana doing the damage one way or the other. But also X-Hope, I think, has struggled to get off the required actions in a time. Doesn't have a lot going for him now. Like he's reached a stage now where he's he's not he might just die. So he's not just fighting, he's fighting to just survive. And whenever Demon Hunter reaches this point, Demon Hunter ends up not winning. So it looks like his plan is to put six damage into face now. He's just working out if he can possibly win next turn, I think. Yeah, he's going to put as much damage as he can into the face. He's got to get rid of the Armorsmith first because otherwise the damage is pointless. And that's made. That's just four damage eaten up plus the armor. That's five. But I feel that he can't win by trading now. Obviously, he's dead in two turns, but. Metamorphosis is an out. Yeah. But as we can see, with the eviscerate in the hand for Yuan Su, X Hope's fears are confirmed. It looked like he was playing sort of to half a plan there because he knew he was dead. He is dead. And Yuan Su and World Elite take a 1 0 lead. And that's the last of the Demon Hunter we will see, and that's a big deal. In last hero standing, Demon Hunter and Warrior both being left up is a fantastic situation to be in. That's a compliment to the lineup that X Hope has brought. That he ends up getting his Zoo Band, which has just left the two best classes in Hearthstone by a distance left up. And in last hero standing, when you get to pick your opponent, that's great. So taking down that Demon Hunter. Still having their own Demon Hunter left is a massive deal. Okay, Rogue versus Face Hunter. This is hard for the Rogue. Like all the things we talked about in the last game, with Demon Hunter not really having the burst to finish it, but getting the early damage in. Well, Face Hunter has the first part of that with the early damage, but then it just keeps murdering you. So, already trying to work out how maybe to activate both of these side quests. Is there the time to do that? Obviously this is the more sensible, obvious, natural play, but he did want to make sure that he wasn't messing up by not playing a side quest early. Having both of the openers a little bit irritating. It's not really where he wants to be. But having one of them is good. Like having one of them is just summon three one one leopard gnomes is six damage plus any damage they can actually do as minions. But you're just not gonna have the time to do both. Most likely, we'll see. It's a weird deck because prioritising pressing the hero power button 
is harder than it sounds because you still have these good cards you want to play, like Animal Companions. So you want to play your real, actual, living Hearthstone cards first, like he's doing. And then begin the process of freeing up your mana to just press the button every turn. That's what he's done. So with the hand he has at the moment, Leper Gnome into Hero Power next turn just looks good. Actually, Toxic Reinforcement into Hero Power. Then the turn after, Leper Gnome into Hero Power. And adjust that, obviously, on the fly, depending on what you pick up. Or don't. Despite having the Eagle Horn Bow, he felt this was more efficient. Getting that Toxic Reinforcement ticked along as quickly as possible. So that will mean he's likely to postpone the bow until turn 5. None of those cards say heal your face for lots. And this is where Last Hero Standing and Conquest are different. Because X-Hope has the opportunity to choose to queue this into Rogue, it makes it a significantly better bring. Well, the answer is at least going about the business of making some sort of board. It's not exactly an amazing board, but that's just unlucky. Bone Wraith will at least help provide a little bit of solace. But the answer really needs to start taking care of the damage he's taking from this one Misha. The rest is all just coming from hero powers. Unleash those hounds is also so tempting. So Exope here, the problem he's having is he wants to press the hero power button again to advance the toxic reinforcements. But he's never going to get a better unleash the hounds than this. And for me, I think you can unleash, kill off the two one ones and use the other three hounds to go face. Uh, by killing off the two one ones, you're protecting your Misha, forcing your opponent to have either to hero power, which they just can't, they don't want to tank another four, or forcing to have more damage in hand. But X Hope spent the whole turn doing the math, he believes this just gets there. And you know, I think he's right. Face Hunter always a bit alien to me. It's always trying to be clever when actually the correct answer is just press the button. Make more bad things happen for your opponent. Oh, yes, yeah, slow yourself down. You picked up another Unleash. I've never seen a Hunter player look so sad about picking up four direct damage. Will it be even more next turn? So if you hero power and eagle horn bow, just five damage to the face, plus your toxic reinforcements. And most of these minions are still going to be there next turn, and then your unleash is, is good. Once you get the job done, if I mean you always want to get the job done, you wonder why these players in fantastic positions get nervous. Weird things can happen if your opponent gets a Galakrond down and then gets a couple of freebie cards and maybe generates an armor smith like we saw last game. And yes, this looks extremely good for X-Hope, like ridiculously good. But for when you're on X-Hope's side, you want to just make sure you don't fall into anything stupid. All right, that's the, where we're at for your answer. Generate anything you attempt to. You really want a theory or lucky you want to generate a spell that helps you. But, oh yeah, oof. You're trying to put enough pressure on. He's not crazy here. If Exope has the second unleashed thing, your answer knows he's going to lose that game anyway. So he's going wide, just trying to deliver some sort of one or two turn lethal. There's 12 on the board, so it's a long way off. And here come the dogs.
Okay, next hope, just being careful. You can see how this could go wrong. It would involve some eviscerates and some things that we can see aren't present in Yuansu's hand. So by calculating it correctly, nothing can go wrong. Exo gets the win and the BM of the toxic reinforcements appearing whilst your opponent's exploding. And it goes to one game apiece. Now Yuansu will be forced to queue up one of his other two decks. And it's priest time. The ability to heal being a very good ability when you're playing against Face Hunter. Pretty nice looking opening hand here for you, Ansu. You basically you, you deal with the minions on the board and then it, the face hunter is slow enough that your hero power can help you as the priest after that point. So having the pyromancer is is huge. Another fantastic card in this matchup is the Shadow Madness. So when your opponent activates their toxic reinforcements, you can steal one of those and trade it in. And it it saves you the two damage. Which sounds like, well, great, well done. You spent three mana saving two damage. But if you're going to heal on the same turn, that's four damage. Suddenly you just get out of range. Meanwhile, Yuansu is putting on a little bit of pressure too. And that's relevant. The pressure is always relevant because now... Yeah, look at this. This is three damage that didn't go to his face. We were talking last game about how I would instinctively trade a little bit too much when playing Face Hunter. But Yuansu is forcing these by curving out, forcing these trades. Because minions on board, uh, just doing this the, the fundamental how to count way, your answer is going to do 5 damage a turn, and X Hope isn't going to do 5 damage a turn with his current board state. And whether you're face hunter or not, if your opponent's racing you by hitting you harder than you're hitting them, your opponent's going to win that race. And already now, X Hope has a world of trouble. His Hent Clan Shade Quill. is just irritating. So, drawing the other part of his deck here though. Part that gives him some hope at least. Still trying to force those pings. Just to advance the quest. Obviously the phase stalker will make some difference when that gets to be played. But for now, Yuansu is well in control here. But X hopes weaving in the pings, but Yuansu is weaving in the anti-pings. To the point where he's actually considering spending his two mana on something else because he feels comfortable. He's not sure. I wonder what he's looking at here. I mean, Thought Steel, there's a lot of good things to kill. Turns out that things that damage your opponent often also damage their minions. It's not quite that simple. Got your own toxic reinforcements which might be useful in finishing the game but that's just not relevant run run the hunt to the point where they can't hurt you anymore yeah and it, it seems weird oh he's only on 26 now he's on 28 but your health total against face decks is just the one thing that matters it's 
for once you can't really use it as a resource. They're just trying to deplete it to zero before you kill them. Unnerfed cards. Scavengers ingenuity. Yeah, this face stalker's big. And as it stands, there's no Shadow Earth Death to deal with it, so you have to actually do some trading. Not going to be able to bump in with a Shade Quill and Breath without taking the full damage from the gnomes. He'd really want to Shadow Madness one of these. I guess he could steal a gnome and then trade everything into the Face Stalker. That might be pretty efficient. Oh, there's a time rip, which might be more efficient. Decision time. I, I just think that the Breath of the Infinite is too clean here. It cleans up your own board as well, but... It kills everything off, and you still have enough... To mana left over to heal yourself again and then next turn you should have pretty good things going on you only take the six from the gnomes it's definitely not ideal I can see why he's looking for other options so another option might be to play the pyromancer and then the one drops or a one drop like the tracking See where he goes with this. Okay. Decides that his Shade Quill. What a silly name. Hench Clan Shade Quill is one of the silliest names in Hearthstone. But yeah, he's decided that that is fine. Wants to keep it on the board. And is rewarded by getting another one. And the downside of healing your opponent isn't that big a deal. You just want to keep all their minions off the board. And four sevens are good at that. This is always an alarm bell though. When they start weaving in arcane shots for no obvious reason. And that health total is getting pretty low. Kill Commander Sand Trooper in hand. That's a lot more damage coming in. And Yuan Su, despite keeping tabs on everything for most of the game, is starting to face down chunky, chunky damage. And going back a couple of turns when he healed from 26 to 28, you can see how much difference that is making right now. Oh, Penance. He didn't get what he was looking for. Unless I'm going insane, that is a penance. And it is. Two mana heal for three. Like, yeah, you, there's minions and things involved written on the card as well. But two mana heal for three. That seems good right now. I guess he's got to work out if um, other options are better. This is his job to do that. But yeah, just just healing for the max. He saw the beginnings of an all-in last turn with that arcane shot to face. So he's not messing around. Another face stalker. Not so good when it's not 5-6. Also not so good when it doesn't fetch anything. So just the two traps in the deck. Oh no, there we go. Some versions do and some versions don't, and I confess to having not checked which version this was. This renew is where he was at a minute ago, I believe. The penance was fine.
Exact is still on 21, so plenty of chances to pick up the wins. Curious to see how Yuanisu goes about trying to get Galakrond. I think next turn his, his hope will be that he can play Kronks and heal, and then the turn I'll play Galakrond and heal. Not in that order, obviously. And that should be enough to put him safe. And he has seen now most of the big damage. See, he's not attacking into an explosive trap. Why take an extra two? It's just not about that. Takes the master spell in case of emergencies, particularly using a second quest. That can definitely be useful going forwards. I'm laughing almost every turn right now because it's so messy. Quite like the idea of master spelling now. Just converting every card into what it says if it heals, or how you convert it to healing speak. And master spell is four mana heal for three right now. Take away that death rattle from the sand trooper. And efficiency is no longer the aim of the game. Healing for as much as you can whilst killing things is now the, the aim. Yeah, so he knows he has to do this. Like This is a given. And he's actually going to use the Shadow Madness to take care of the damage from the Sand Trooper. Which is probably more efficient. Um, I say that because there is a chance your opponent does get that extra quest off and then your master spell with more important use somewhere else. <laughs> Still not ready to go face. Another kill command. The damage just keeps coming and coming. <laughs> and Yancy is not in a position to finish this game off right now. Apotheosis! And it's open deck list. He knows it's not a freezing trap. Boom, don't care. I'm going to gain six health. And next turn, guess what? I'm going to gain six more. And if you kill my 6-6, six, six, guess what? That's six damage that didn't go to my face anyway. You answer, he spent the whole game trying to find that apotheosis, but finally gets it. He does keep himself alive long enough to get it. And that's a monstrous deal, because that means the priest is alive going into game number four, and it's taking on the warrior, which I'm on the side that priest is favoured. I think it's not as favoured as priest fans think it is, but I think it is favoured. And World Elite now within distance, within touching distance, of actually being able to pick up their first win. Still not quite over. Yuan Su's doing this the way I suggested a few turns ago. It's just slowed down a bit because he has some nice wrinkles to throw in there. Winning the game by just getting out of range with the Galakrond armor. He doesn't care about the hero power. He just wants that sweet, sweet five armor. And I don't know for sure, but I think he hero powered every turn from that turn where he only had 26 health. Tongue in cheek, of course. And it, there's every chance that, that that heal gave him a much easier path to victory. Now, X Hope has become no hope. No top deck can get him out of this one, I believe. No cars should ever say that because there's always something happens. Should be stated though that game four 
might be for all the marbles because if X Hope does win it with the warrior against the priest, and that is by no means unheard of, it's not it's not a, a thrashing by any means, then he will have the warrior versus the demon hunter, and that is a thrashing. That is a straight up warrior just wins as much as you could hope for in a Hearthstone match. So it's going to come down to one of the most interesting matchups in Hearthstone right now, which is Priest versus Warrior. Uh, there's probably some people who think it's not one of the most interesting matchups. It does take a while. But the cut and thrust, the Warrior gets to dictate the speed at which things happen, and the Priest has to just keep having answers. Rampage and inner fire in the uh, inner rage in the opening hand for X Hope. This ends well so often, but it depends whether you're willing to go for it or not. You can sometimes just make a massive six six, and your opponent shadow air death set, and the game is over. And that might put him off. The corsair cash is huge. The constant chipping away with weapons is massive. This is why. The green skin version of the deck, which none of the players have brought in week two in China. I think we might see it in later weeks. That's how Grandmasters developed. But yeah, for now, no green skins. When you do have it, it is just a monster. And you'll see now Corsair Cash into a weapon is good enough to start chipping away. Nice little double reading toe on there. It's kind of a priesty habit. I think you end up just reading every card you get just to make sure you haven't missed a line of text. Because nobody knows all the cards in Hearthstone. I think regular priest players probably know some of the nonsense priest minions better than anybody else in Hearthstone, but remembering the exact text on every card is harder than it sounds. I don't see any reason not to just develop Toe on here. If there are reasons, you might steal an egg later on and want to pop it and that sort of stuff, and actually that he's decided to keep it. Yeah, it does work pretty well actually with Shadow Madness. You might steal their Toe on and then pop it with your Toe on, and oh my goodness. Many, many crazy things can happen. X Hope's job, though, is simple, at least to start with. Hit the opponent. There we go, hit number one. Then next turn, he's in position to start making a board, which, with his current hand, is a bit icky, but he is going to be able to go Risky Skipper into a minion, into Double Brute at some point, the way this is lining up. Doesn't have the ideal cards for it. Gaining armor against Priest can be a little bit of a problem for the Warrior because it messes up with its battle rages later on. And that's why we see this now. He's got to deal with his minion. But also there's a big chance there's going to be risky skippers and armor smiths happening very soon. And this is a very good way of making sure that the damage is taken and you've got a minion that just faces down the opposing one. And yeah. They're playing Priest, you can just heal back up and it, the minion doesn't die, but that's two mana you made them use. And one of the ways, one of the many ways you lose as Warrior in this is if they, you know, the Priest just makes way too many minions, curves out nicely and actually you find yourself on the defensive, you end up having to clear using a Risky Skipper and then your Battle Rages get worse, your Brutes get worse. So making them use two mana in this way, not ideal, but also does mean that he can kill things next turn. But Yuansu's patience with his own Teron has been rewarded here. This is going to make life very difficult for X-Hope. Do you even want to kill this thing? You're going to win the game, you've got to, because Apotheosis will just ruin your day. But if you kill it now and they apotheosis the Fate Weaver, then what have you achieved? I'll tell you what they've achieved. Nothing. So he may have to go... I mean, I'm hating this. 
Is there a way of getting down the brutes? Because if there's not, yeah, you get double brute down. You get single brute down. So he's either going to have to waste a cork on a late or a brute here to be sure to tidy this up. And he's going to have to waste an inner rage. Which is a big deal because the dream is cork on a late, inner rage, rampage, mercenaries. And that's a whole lot of damage, 18 damage. Doing it this way. You've used a lot of that up. You've used that inner rage up. But you've dealt with the issue and you've made a big board. Answers available though. Shadow Men is there. Time rip if you're not in a hurry. So Yuansu needs to just think how he wants this to look in a few turns time. He's got quite a lot of control over this situation. And yeah, decides that he's not in any sort of hurry. As long as he stays above 22. That's one of the breakpoint numbers that you're scared of. Which is an awfully high number. It makes you feel like the warrior should win more often. would have been uh, including one in a rage of course so now the number goes down to 18 and that's a long way off and one of the problems of playing against the priest as the warrior is at some point you just have to take a chance so if you play the challenger and they able to somehow steal and keep it that's a chance Make a big minion like this, that's also taking a chance. Personally here, I'd have gone for the Brute if I was going to make a big minion. And if that gets Shadow of Death, I get to protect my Rampage minion a bit better. It also gives me one extra turn to pick up a Mercenary so I can copy this. But X hope maybe with a read that he's going to get there. Or maybe with a read that he's not going to get there. And therefore he has to go for it now. Either way, Yuansu can deal with this with the Pyromancer. But he has a pained expression as if it's going to cost him more than he wants. I guess that's how good priest players work. Everything always costs you more than you want, and that forces you to be more efficient and find other ways around it. But this looks fairly straightforward to me and not at all bad. So I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't like this. This just looks fine. And again, forcing your opponent to reveal some more things. Good time for your War More Challenger, I think. Picks up the Grom, that always gives you this hope because then you can have a turn where you just Grom them. Like turn 9, Risky Skipper, Grom you for 10, and I've still got backup of Corcon Elite and other gubbins going on. And a lot of the time, the priest will have to spend time killing off the Grom and all the peripheral stuff. And that'll allow you to set up the other part of your wing. So, my planning would be to try and play Risky Skipper and Gromash on turn 9. I would be trying to make a board on turn 7 this turn. And use that board to do some damage with on turn 8. Now with that in mind, that means I don't really want to play a Risky Skipper this turn. Because using both Skippers, like one to clear now and one for the Grom leaves you dead if you need to use one later to draw some cards or something. So I'd be one more challenger in here. And, and possibly even putting something else into the face. But this is okay. So I was saying about using Risky Skipper later to draw cards. He's using it now to draw cards. Which kind of solves the issue. 
But Yuancy's got his own Grom. And Warrior does not like this. They don't play Executes. I think Boar Control in particular ran Execute for a very short time in in playtesting. And it just wasn't good enough. I've tried it myself. I named Boar first because he's actually really good at Hearthstone. Um, but yeah, I've tried it myself and it doesn't apply well enough often enough. You quite often just would have done better if it was a better card. So the problem here isn't that he can't kill the Grom. It's that he will waste a lot of resources doing so. If he gets Ethereal Lackey, I wonder what he's going to do. I guess you still had to kill it this way, even if you got Ethereal. Okay, so that's not how he wanted those two turns to go after I described the plan, but the plan is still there. He hasn't really picked up much backup. He has managed to develop a weapon, though. That can help him get backup. Huge pickup for Yuansu, though means that if X-Hope does the Grom thing, it all just gets wiped out by Galakrond. Weirdly enough, playing Galakrond can be an art in Priest against Warrior. You do lose your hero power. Obviously, you get what is functionally a better one. And, you know, Priest minions do have lifesteal. It is a thing that happens. You get still get spells that have lifesteal. You gain the armor, but you do have to think carefully before playing a Galakond. And I think this is a tough turn. How much do you actually care about this War Mall Challenger? And the answer is not enough. And I like this. And this could well pay rewards for him. This is also cut off the Grom bump. Yeah, you, you see the shake of the head now. It's like. Over the course of this game, X-Hope's had all the things he wanted, but he's not been allowed to set up to do the things he wanted to do with them. It'd be such a lovely world if you just get to play your Grommash and then your opponent kills that off and then you go Risky Skipper, or your Risky Skipper stays up and you play a Corcoran and your Mercenaries and you do eight more damage and that's enough. But Yuansu playing down a Taunt minion on the correct turn to do so. And let's not forget, Yuansu is about to kill X-Hope. It's not just about how X-Hope's going to deliver this 23, which is kind of the focus of how you approach this matchup to talk about. But X-Hope has no time, he's going to die. So you've got to get rid of the Shield of Galakon, and even that's not looking easy now. So I'm going to try and do it a lackey format. Doesn't look like that's forthcoming. So now he's having to challenge it and this is horrible looking. Oh, he gets Ancient Watcher, which is just no use at all for what he's trying to achieve. Although he does have a Titanic lackey available, I guess. Still, this is a board of things. I think that's the only way to describe it. I never know which is which. You all know this is my problem. That looks like mass resurrection. That looks like people getting up. Not plague of death, which is people not getting up. But he had to use the mercenaries just to get this on the board. Which means that the mercenary combo is no longer available, which means that, you know, your answer is pretty safe. Well, he's very safe. He's on 30 health. This is where he started the game. So that's beyond pretty safe. And in fact, he does pass on the heel on this one occasion. He's looked pretty accomplished on this priest. He knows his key numbers. He knows his strategies really well. And Exo... <laughs> The one good thing, I guess, is he's probably unlikely to just die out of the blue. As it happens, Galakon now makes a weapon, and it's just possible that Exo will die next turn.
Well, I think we can safely say, not say, you're never quite safely saying anything against Warrior, but it looks incredibly likely now that obviously the World Elite are going to pick up their first victory. And I'm just going to have a very quick glance at the tables. Yep, they are the last team to get a victory, I thought so. So all eight teams now have played either three or four matches, and they've all got at least one win. And the only undefeated team are VK on three and zero. And we haven't even seen our world champion in action yet. I assume she'll be in action next week. Uh, as there are three weeks per phase and you put out three players. It looks like VK have held a lion back. Saving the best until last. Uh, can't wait to see her in action again. She already did incredibly well in the Masters Tour event as well. Getting another top eight. Sort of how Pavel went about his world championship run. Win the world championships. But it's not about them today. It is about World Elite picking up their first win. Some nice priest play there from Yuan Su. I'll see you all later.